What's up, everybody? Will back. Will shop dating, and we're here with a 2010 Kia Forte EX five-speed automatic transmission, and we are changing out the CV axle. Wrench or socket, 17 millimeter, 19 millimeter. As you can see, I have the 17. That's a 21 foot what's name, 19, 17. Here, you're gonna need a 12 millimeter to take off the. Um, bolts holding on the bracket so you can get to the strut bolts and I'm using my Milwaukee drill and my Milwaukee impact if you don't have those you're gonna need plenty of ratchets and a breaker bar with a long bar so you can get the castle nut free all right let me set up and let's get it off all right we're back we're gonna take off the wheel which I believe is a 19 millimeter Oh, sorry, that is a 21. If you did not have power tools, you would loosen it while it was on the ground with a breaker bar. So I have power tools. Just right on. Alright, next we're going to remove the caliber and the brake pads, which is a, I believe it's a 17, yeah, it's a 17 inch socket. Righty tight, lefty dusty. And once we get it off, we're going to sit it over there. I normally use a hook or something or a jack stand. Anything to keep it up and keep stress off the hose. That's one. Make sure you remember the little washer that comes with it. There we go. As you can see. Oh, so you can have a drop. And there it is. Right there. That's one. Put this under our jack. Or our jack stand, sorry. And let's get our second one out. Which is exactly below it. So recently been put in, so. I'll tell you what the deal is in a little bit. Should be able to get it by hand. Let's lift the caliber up. Take some stress off of it. And there's number two. That right there. Now caliber should come off. You have to pry it off. Screwdriver. Yeah, so let's compress that a little bit. Handy dandy big screwdriver. Which will come back later because we're gonna use it to uh, free the CV axle from the transmission, as you see, it pops right off. And I'm gonna kind of leave that there for the time being. It won't go nowhere. And we're gonna swivel over to this bracket right there. That top bracket. And we're gonna loosen that, in which case it is. I'm oh, sorry, not the top one. We're gonna loosen the bottom one. I apologize. But the bottom one, which is a 12 millimeter, which I'm gonna use my Milwaukee drill because I already have it set up. Make sure it's 
should make quick work of it. There we go. Take that off. Take that bracket down. I'm gonna put the screw back in just to hold it. Keep it safe. And we're almost there. So now I'm gonna take this off. this back over here out the way which if you can if you can get it up under here you'd be perfect but I'm just gonna set it there for now oh let me not be sloppy go grab a jack we'll let it get under the seashell sorry put it there for right now all right back we're gonna take off the tie rod in in which case you gotta remove the cotter pin here Take a side piece of side cutters, just bend them straight, bend them around it like that, and like if I can get it, come on, like this. There we go. I like that. Just make it straight so you can get them out. Try to get it out the same way. Now, if they're completely rusted and pretty bad, uh, you'll probably end up having to replace the tie right in or the collider pin. But since I'm reusing this, I'm going to try to get it out straight. And there we go. Just like that. So, we're going to take that and put it over under our jack stand so we don't lose it with the cutters. And then we're gonna take a 17 millimeter socket. Should fit perfect. And we're gonna take that off. I'm gonna use the ratchet. Use the ratchet. Remember righty tighty lefty loosey. So, yeah. No, that didn't. Like that. Should come right off by hand. Very easy. Take that off by hand. And to remove the tie rod in, you can use a couple of different methods. You can use the pickle fork that fits in between here and separates it. They also have a tool that clips here in between here and separates it when you tighten it down with a ratchet. And you, if you don't have any of that, you can always just use the hammer method, which as you can see, I've already done <laughs> that little mark right there doesn't cause it any problems just tap that knuckle and it should pop right out there it is didn't want to break I almost broke my phone but there it is <laughs> pop right out I did it kind of hard but there you go tie right ends moving free no damage all good so the next thing that we're gonna do which I know that we're gonna have to do because of installation, is remove the sway bar link, in which case you can tell that is a brand new sway bar link. That is also a, I believe it's a 17. There you go, tighten up, hold up. Should be a 17, let's test it. It is not a 17, it is a 19. 19, and we're gonna use my gun. Put it down to two. And right up. Easy. Um, if you had one of these and it was giving you some trouble, just use a wrench and put a Allen wrench in here and hold it still. It'll come off. So we're going to just pop that off. Have it to the side. And we're pretty much almost done. We're going to come back and loosen the strut well we're gonna loosen sorry we're gonna loosen the axle nut and actually i can go ahead and do that now and then we're gonna come back and release the strut bolts there so so 32 millimeters sorry so once again i'm gonna use my impact on setting two shouldn't be that difficult to come out okay take that back let's put it on three Oh, 
that is completely oh oh well i just remembered something <laughs> there is a lock on this castle nut so i have to get a small screwdriver i'll uh come down i completely forgot this is not a normal one I'm, i shouldn't have forgot that but if you look right there there is a lock indentation what you're gonna do is take a uh take a flathead screwdriver and undent that and then you can remove it so i'll be right back as soon as i get that straightened out to where the castle nut will come right off all right, all right. back i got the castle nut loose in which case i used a flat flathead screwdriver and i also put my impact on the higher setting and got that free without any damage so now what we're gonna do is take the um yeah, no damage sorry um release the strut bolts and then we're gonna go down release the strut bolts these are two strut bolts here and then we're gonna go down and pop the cv axle out of the transmission Let's see if i can get a look at it from here so y'all can see where it is right there so have a good look at it so let's get the tools and get that done in this case i think one side is a 17 this side is a 17. Just gonna hold the wrench. And this side is a 19. Tap that out with a hammer. One. Put them together. And number two. Be careful. back it fell put the caliber back because it fell and get my nut because it also fell there you go so in there like that <laughs> and now let's knock this out and be careful because the cv or the whole hub is going to come falling forward the lift a little pull and put the bolt on the nut like I said goes by our jack and we should be able to push our CV axle out which it is coming out bounce and a little turn and there you go that that is out so now we just have to disconnect it from the transmission back there which i'm going to take a break and i'm going to put tape onto my big screwdriver in so i don't leave any damage on it and wedge in between there pop it out this way i may need a uh hammer just to kind of hit up in there and separate it but be right back all right, back, and we're gonna go down and release the CV axle, and we're pretty much done 
with the um, taking out of the bad or old part as you can tell this is a brand new part but we're gonna go ahead and uh, replace it with the right part so let's go down and pop it out I'm taking my screwdriver like I said I put some tape over it just to not damage it shouldn't have damaged it anyway but just to be extra careful and I'm taking my large hammer with me as well try to get up under here okay Close. Y'all can see better than me. Yeah, right there. Okay. Let's see. Right, so, we'll try this. That pops right out. Popped right out. So, normally you have to give it like at least a little tap or something, but that is um, pretty much it. We're waiting on the new part to arrive. They got over two day air. Um, two O'Reilly's uh, from the factory. So, yeah. Um, once again, no damage to the CV axle. Um, it's okay. And I will tell y'all a quick story about this one. Ooh, that bad. Tell y'all a quick story about this one. Um, this is a five speed automatic transmission, as I said in the beginning of the video. This ring here, the speed sensor ring, is apparently different um, on the old one. And I think also this flange here is different as well. So uh, we're going to change this out for the right one. And uh, we'll be right back as soon as they get it in. They said they were going to get it in at 5 o'clock. And I'm pretty sure it's around 4.30. So as soon as they get that in, I'll be back with the rest of the video on the installation, which is pretty much the same as taking it out, just in reverse. Um, that's pretty much it. Um, just since I have a minute, I appreciate everybody, all my subscribers, everyone who um, subscribes to my channel, watches my videos, and find them useful. I really do appreciate everybody. Um, make sure you share my videos, hit that subscribe button, tell your friends if there's anybody you know that works on cars. Let them know about my channel. That way they can go ahead and find out how to do things pretty easy. Um, save yourself some money. Any DIYers, anything like that. But uh, this is where we're at. Everything's apart. And there's the old part. And we're waiting on the new part. And I'll be back with another part. I think that's all the parts. See y'all in a little bit. Peace. All right, back. We finally got the part in. We've been waiting all day. Finally got it in and I'm comparing the parts. There is virtually no difference between the parts on the transmission side. There's a slight differential in the shape of it here. Shaft, exactly the same. Boot, everything the same. But I think the biggest difference is probably here. As you can see, this one is more of a little cylindrical shape with the seal here. Rings are the same. That's what I thought the difference was. Is not, and you see almost the same distance, but this one's just a little bit fatter. So, if you're doing this, this is the difference in the four-speed transmission and the five-speed transmission CV axle. And be back with installation. I'll probably have to do it in the morning. All right, we'll back, and we're back with the installation. What you're gonna do is take the end of the axle shaft. That fits into the transmission. This one right here. You can slide that in until it clicks. You may have to give it a little tap. Let's try to get that in there straight. in there so I'm going to pause. okay now we're gonna thread it into the <coughs> excuse me thread it into the hub I'm gonna take off the castle nut right here Way. Little time. 
With that completed, <clears throat> that completed, we are, like I said, gonna go in reverse. So we're gonna go ahead and thread on the new castle nut, which this one does not have the same locking indentation as the last one. Oh, yes, it does. You can still indentate it right there. We're gonna put the sway bar link back. On the correct castle nut. Locking castle nut is 17. I'm not gonna tighten everything down yet. Just want to get everything in. We're gonna need our strut bolts. At least one. Like I said, basically installation is the reverse. Taking it off. Remember which way the bolts go in, they go in this way. So that's connected, that's connected. Well, go ahead and just, like I said, connect things. Just connect the tie rod in. Throw the castle nut back on. Everything's going on by hand anyway right now. So I can get the bolts situated in the strut. Don't want to misthread this. Should go easy by hand. Like so. Tighten that down by hand. Good. All right. This is the only issue that we see. All right, back. Finally got those situated. Uh, gonna tighten those down real quick. Which is a 19 and a 17, I believe. This end. back together there let's tighten up the sway bar link real quick I think that was 17 oh, that was 19 that was 19 no need to switch good and I believe this was a 17 See, 
Uh, maybe, maybe not. My bad. Maybe, maybe not. My bad. I thought I'd tighten up the sway bar link, as you can see. And we're going to tighten in. Sway bar link. We're going to tie right in. And we're going to use a wrench to line up those holes. Torque space on these is normally around 35, 37. So, to the next hole. Right there looks almost good. A little bit more. That looks perfect. Let's get our collider pin. Put that in there. And we're almost done. We have the strut tightened up. Yeah. We have the sway bar link tightened up. We have the tie rod in. We're tightening up right now, and we have the caliber, caliber bracket, caliber and caliber bolts, and ah, finally broke on me. So, like I said, may have to replace them. I probably got a new one, but this one still, still work. If I can get it in there straight, it'll still work. There we go. Just knock that through. There we go. If it wasn't 80% positive that I might be doing this job again, I would put a brand new one, but. Just to save me time, one bend is better, it's easier to get off than two bends. Is it, why would you say that? I see yeah, everything's installed correctly, but I feel like the part is not the correct part. Everything that in my blood is telling me that, but I'm gonna go ahead and listen to everyone. And pray that it is the correct part. All right, let's tighten down our castle nut. Or axle nut, axle nut, castle nut, and uh, get it all together. Let her take it for a test drive. Just put it on two. So three, one time, just to get that. In there. there you go. And like I said, this is a Loch Ness. It will do a slight indentation. We're gonna not, not going to do a huge one on that. In fact, I might not be able to do a great one because I have the tape on here. That's about it. Just a little indentation so it can't escape. As y'all saw how I was trying to take the oven off, it's not going anywhere. So let's get our caliber and our brakes. This around this way. Just gonna tie it back. Just gonna break that back in there. Our bracket where it's supposed to be already. Now we're once again just gonna sit that there. Won't go anywhere. Now that we have uh, pretty much everything tightened up, we're going to go ahead and... Oh, where'd that boat go? Huh. I had a... <laughs> oh, here it is. I was at the... I just removed this. We're going to put the bolt back for the uh, brake hose bracket. I'm going to just tighten that by hand. I'm going to grab our bolts for the caliber bracket. All right, everybody, we'll back. Sorry for the cut in the video, but I had to get the job done. Um, as I said, the part was the wrong part. The issue end up being is that it is a 2010 Kia Forte, but it was made in the 12th month of 2010. So they put the 2011 suspension and transmission parts on that car. So if you're ever having this issue, make sure that you check the date on the car. And if it is in the 12th month, look for the next year of the car. 
Um, I got the part installed, the correct part installed. I had to go get it from Needmore, which has everything for O'Reilly's. Um, got back, got it installed, um, drove it perfectly fine, good, everything. I want to say appreciate everybody at O'Reilly's that helped me out today. And I want to say thank you to all my subscribers. Anyone who watches my video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And I'll see you all later. Peace.